In my video about the five most common causes of breakage, I discussed the difference between rinse out conditioner and deep treatments and told you that you don't need both. Based on the amount of comments and questions that I got here and around my other socials, a lot of you were stunned to find out that you are over conditioning your hair and wasting your treatments. So in this video, I want to dig a little deeper into the cleansing and conditioning process. Now, I know the reason that you want to use the rinse out conditioner before treatment is for detangling purposes because you're looking for slip. Here's the thing. You should be able to cleanse and go straight to your deep treatment unless you are using the rinse out as your conditioner for the day. When you start your wash day, using a pre-poo cleanser to begin the process of breaking up buildup in the scalp and hair can be very helpful because it'll also start to open your cuticle to allow water to pass through. A question a lot of you had was, can I use my rinse out conditioner as a pre-poo? Well, technically you can, but it's probably not gonna make it any easier for the rest of the process. Conditioners are not cleansers. Their pH is lower, so they don't induce cuticle movement and they contain conditioning agents that attach to the strand instead of cleansing surfactants that remove product and debris from the strand. So what's going to happen is that rinse out conditioner will insulate the product already on your strands adding to what needs to be shampooed away, depending on how concentrated the oils and butters are in the formula. I would say if you are very much set that you have to detangle before washing, go for a formulated co-wash. Co-wash is short for cleansing conditioner, and they are formulated with a mix of quaternary compounds and conditioning agents that give slip that you're looking for, but they also have cleansing properties to them. So at least it would be working to help you remove buildup versus adding to it. Technically though, you don't have to pre-detangle. I haven't done that with any of the hundreds and hundreds of heads of hair that I've done, regardless of texture. You don't even see me doing that in tutorials. When you start your cleansing process, if you are using, let's say for instance, my scalp and curl clarifier pre-shampoo treatment, it's been purposely formulated with cleansing ingredients and conditioning agents that help break up old product and start allowing the hair to open up gently. Once you massage it through for a couple minutes, you will be able to pull your hair apart under running water and start to feel it untangle and that shed hair begin to slide out. If you want to go straight into shampooing, you can separate your hair into quadrants so you can tackle a section at a time to stay more organized if you are feeling overwhelmed. Let the water run through your hair for a couple minutes so you get full saturation and the products you have in start to dissolve and loosen up. Now when you apply your shampoo, the hair is ready to receive it. When you're shampooing, Work from your scalp to your ends. You want to avoid mushing your hair in a circle around your head and always work your products down the hair shaft to avoid damaging your cuticle layer. You should notice in that down sweeping motion that you're starting to collect some of that shed hair and start to slide it out. Make sure that you are using your fingertips on your scalp because scratching hard with nails can cause micro tears that result in inflammation and damage to the scalp. If you have a shampoo brush or a scalp massager with smooth rounded teeth or bristles that you like to use, those are okay. Just make sure that you are keeping them clean and disinfected and not applying too much pressure. You should massage shampoo through the hair for at least one full minute before rinsing it out to allow it to break up the product, collect it off the strand, and be rinsed away. And remember, lukewarm water is best. Hot water roughs up the cuticle, causes frizz, and can weaken strands over time. So now you are ready to apply your deep treatment. Let's get on the same page here. Deep conditioning is a process done with a conditioner that's been formulated with a smaller molecular structure to allow deposit inside the strand. Deep conditioning is not a time thing. You cannot make a rinse out conditioner into a deep conditioner because you left it on longer. Rinse out conditioners are formulated to attach to the outside of the strands to trap moisture and protect hair for a couple days or so. 
Treatments and masks are designed for deeper penetration, repair, moisture, retention for maybe three to five days or so, depending on the formula and the hair, but don't get too tripped out about wanting to calculate that. There's no perfect way to do it. You generally can feel when your hair is becoming depleted of moisture and it will vary person to person. Rinse out conditioners and co-washes are helpful in a regimen routine if you wash frequently, meaning more than once a week, if you are extremely active or you need to reset short hair for styling. Now let's discuss this idea of using a rinse out conditioner and then a deep treatment. I want you to pause this video, go to your product stash and grab the deep conditioners, treatments and mask you have and then come back. No, seriously, pause me, go grab them and come back. Okay, you ready? Look at the text on the back of the label and find the instructions. I'm gonna read a few that I have. Agadir Moisture Mask, shampoo with Agadir Moisturizing Shampoo, apply mask generously to slightly towel dried hair. Okay. Aveda Botanical Repair Intensive Strengthening Mask, after shampooing, smooth through damp hair, leave on two to five minutes. Hmm. Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. After shampooing, massage into the hair from root to tip. Leave in for 10 minutes before rinsing. Alrighty. Mono's Hair Curl Restoring Treatment. Wash with Curl Hydrator Shampoo. Apply in sections and detangle. Process seven to 10 minutes with hair steamer, dryer, or conditioning cap. Rinse out. Do you see a common theme here? They all say shampoo and apply the treatment. They do not say shampoo, use our rinse out or daily conditioner, rinse that out and then apply this treatment. If you were supposed to use two conditioners, the instructions would suggest that you do. The copy on the labels of your products from the instructions to the ingredients and the benefit callouts were all substantiated by the lab that formulated it and approved according to cosmetic regulations by the legal entity that the brand is managed by. The instructions are not just random made up text. They are there to tell you the intended use of the product based on how the formula was made and tested for compliance before it was manufactured and put on shelves for you to buy. Now, can you deviate slightly to the left or right on timing with treatments? Yes, the timing is based on what is considered normal or medium porosity. So if you have low porosity hair, you can add a few minutes. And if you have high porosity hair, you wanna stick to the timing at the low end of the suggested frame or possibly even a few minutes less. But under no circumstance should you be leaving treatments in for hours and overnight. Your hair can only absorb so much. Once the strand reaches full absorption, which is what the timing on the label is referring to, excessive amounts of time above that will just make the hair limp and weak or brittle over time. Consider the tools that you use to detangle. If you're using your fingers and it's taking you hours and requiring you to use a lot of product to do it, stop torturing yourself and get a detangling comb or brush so you can stop struggling. Here are a few of my favorite detangling tools that I have found worked well in all hair types. It's really just a matter of personal preference, how the tool feels in your hand and how it slides and glides through your hair. So if you are using a calmer brush not made for detangling, the material and design of that tool may be making it harder for you to get that glide that you need. If you are thinking, how am I supposed to detangle without conditioner before the treatment? You just are. Before you decide that you can't go straight to your treatment, consider if you've actually tried all of these tips given or if you are allowing your assumptions and habits to block your blessing of a more efficient wash day and the healthier hair that you deserve. Your treatments have more than enough slip if you have properly cleansed and you are using tools that help you. When detangling, use your fingers to massage the treatment in. Want more slip? Wear vinyl gloves. Separate chunks of hair with your fingers, then work your way from ends to roots with the tool of your choice. The treatment will expand when it comes in contact with the water in your hair, so you don't need to use so much. If you see lots of frothing and globs of product oozing off to the floor, you are using too much. 
It should not look like you have cake batter in your hair. And remember, if you are going long periods of time between wash days, you will have more difficulty detangling because you will have more shed hair to remove. If you want to get the best out of the products you buy, follow the instructions before you start looking for ways to modify it. Usually, following instructions is the answer to the problem you're having. If you're baking a cake and it calls for three eggs and you add six, that cake is not going to come out right. Instructions are there to guide you and help you have the best experience possible with the product. This goes for styling products as well. Since I brought it up, let's take a small sidebar on styling products. Now this may shock you, you may even side eye me, but you can use any styling product you want, regardless of your hair type or your curl pattern. I know that that hair typing chart has been sending people into a frenzy for years, but I am telling you as a professional, the science of hair based on porosity, density, shape of the follicle, AKA whether or not the strands are straight or have a wave curl or coil texture, the hair typing chart does not account for every possible combination of characteristic that hair can have. The type of products you use should be tied to the result you want. Want more volume? Use lightweight lotions, foams, or mousse. You want hold in definition, gels, puddings, defining creams. That's what you want to use. You can control the weight of products by how much of it you apply. If you are using a lot of products together and then afterwards say, well, none of these products worked. Did you follow the instructions? Did you use too much? Did those products blend well to begin with? Did you fully cleanse and condition your hair first or did you put the product on dirty hair? Now, when it comes to layering stylers, there is a way to figure out if they will play well together. I've shown my method for this in various videos over the last seven years, and it really does help when you are exploring products to get a combo that you like. Taking a little of each, blending them together in your hands will let you see if they seamlessly blend or if you end up with frothing or little beads of product forming, you may not want to combine those particular items in your hair. Styling products are not miracles. They are not magic. They work with the hair that they are applied to, the way that they are applied, the water coming through your pipes. Hard water tends to be disruptive to a lot of styling products, so if you have hard water, consider getting a shower filter. The environment you live in, meaning the air quality and pollution levels and the humidity levels. The more water in the air, the harder it will be to avoid frizzing. How much time you spend outdoors? Are you a pedestrian most of the time or do you get inside of your car in your garage and drive door to door? All of these things will play a role in how products behave. That's why when you are watching tutorials, don't get frustrated if you don't have the same experience with the product as the person that you are watching. If you are over the age of 25 or so, you did not grow up with the internet. Once upon a time, you shopped for your cosmetics without Googling what other people had to say first. Now don't get me wrong, having access to tutorials and reviews and being able to see things before you buy them is awesome. I definitely like to look at reviews before buying electronics or cookware items, so I get it. But when it comes to product selection, ultimately you have to try it to see if you like it. How do you know if you like a certain dish on a menu? You order it and you taste it. How do you know if you like that new song everyone is talking about? you have to go stream it and listen to it. Don't let tutorials cripple you from using your common sense or discourage you from trying things to see how they will work for you. Don't let tutorials cripple you from using your common sense or discourage you from trying things to see how they will work for you. I understand not wanting to waste money and end up with products you won't use again, so, Shop with retailers that allow returns and exchanges. Whatever you are trying to figure out in your healthy hair journey, I encourage you to not get discouraged or frustrated with yourself or your hair. It's a learning process and your journey is not to be compared with anyone else's. Take a breath, take inventory of what you're doing, isolate a variable to work on at a time so you can see what's making a difference or not, and 
you will evolve your routine and get it to a place where it feels comfortable and less consuming. Try to keep it simple. More steps and more things are not necessarily going to be better. Just be patient. You will find what works for you. I hope you have learned a few things that you can apply to your regimen and share with a neighbor. Sharing is caring. You are going to find links to everything shown as well as additional posts and videos that are related to this one in the about section below this video or by visiting monoshair.com.